Item number, SCP-557. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. As it is not possible to relocate SCP-557, Research Site-29 has been built surrounding it. Geographic and aerial surveys of the area have been altered to make it appear to be empty desert, with no valuable archaeological or mineral features. On-site personnel have several tasks. To prevent unauthorized observation of and access to SCP-557. Despite its inhospitable location, several occult groups, including the appear to be aware of SCP-557 and have shown an interest in it. Unauthorized personnel are to be taken into custody, interrogated, and dealt with appropriately. Anyone attempting to tunnel below level 5 or disturb the stone block in the floor of room 501 is to be terminated immediately. To continue to attempt translation of the records found in SCP-557, to monitor the area for SCP-557-1. SCP-557-1 should be assumed to be Keter class and is to be captured if possible, otherwise terminated. To monitor room 501 and serve as a strike team should anything emerge from beneath it. Description SCP-557 is an um an nar era tomb, estimated to have been built circa 2400 BCE on a gravel plain in the empty quarter of northwestern Oman. Investigation of the surrounding area indicates it may be part of the lost city of Ubar. SCP-557 was discovered in 1988 during an inquiry into the disappearance of a geological survey team in the area. Unlike similar structures, SCP-557 includes five underground levels, constructed primarily of sandstone apparently used as an ancient prison and containment site. Although living quarters and weapons for approximately staff and guards exist on level 1, the facility appears to have been slowly abandoned over the years and empty since circa 300 CE. Only two skeletons were found on level 1. A substantial library of records was found on level 1 in a number of ancient languages. Only the records in Egyptian and a final note left in Greek have been translated. Levels 2 and 3 are stated in the records to be a prison for heretics and sorcerers, but appear not to have been used for up to 1,000 years before the site was abandoned. Level 4 is described as a place for the abnormal. Skeletons resembling SCP and SCP have been discovered locked away in stone cells, confirming the intent of the structure. Level 5 consists of a 51.2 meter long hallway filled with complex traps and deadfalls, leading to a single large 21.3 meters by 19.7 meters by 5.4 meters room, designated as 501. Although all of the traps appear to have been sprung or cleared, researchers should exercise caution. The door to room 501, anachronistically composed of was found torn down from the inside. Based on the distribution of dust in this area, this event happened only approximately 20 years ago. In the center of the floor of room 501 is a partially buried 3.2 meter by 3.35 meter granite block, estimated to weigh 80,000 kilograms. The block is covered with untranslated runes. A similar, thinner block stands in the room and shows evidence that a living being, designated SCP-557-1, was chained to it, using chains from the same material as the door. No evidence of the continued presence of SCP-557-1 has been found. Translated records only refer to SCP-557-1 as the prisoner, with the exception of one reference in Egyptian to the bastard son of Apep. Addendum Translation of a note, found in the records room. I will write in Greek, so that any learned man who finds this place will understand. I am the last of the keepers, and I will be dead soon. The sands are taking this place, and perhaps it is for the best. The prisoner must not escape, and the gateway to the dark must never be opened. I do not think the gate can be moved, 
But who knows of the prisoner? Not even the gods could kill it, and it was only with their help that he was secured. Without the rituals, I do not know. Secure the door the best you can, and never move the stone. Item number, SCP-570, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-570 is to be contained within a reinforced steel containment locker. No personnel are permitted to wear SCP-570, and all subjects who have worn it during testing are to have it removed immediately afterwards. Personnel who have worn SCP-570 are to be given medical treatment for their hands, following removal. Description SCP-570 is a pair of cotton gloves. When worn, they will extend between 100 to 150 cotton fibers into the outer epidermal layer of the subject's hand. Removing SCP-570 after this point will cause extreme damage to the subject's epidermal and muscle tissue. Following initial exposure to SCP-570, these fibers will migrate throughout the subject's body, eventually establishing contiguous connections to 80% of the subject's muscle tissue. Subjects affected by SCP-570 are classified as SCP-571. Instances of SCP-571 are capable of controlling the actions of any living organism they have physically contacted while wearing SCP-570. Subjects are connected to SCP-571 by several strings, which are produced from its fingers. These strings are not composed of the same material as SCP-570. Instead, they contain DNA and match the composition of the SCP-571's muscle tendons. With practice, instances of SCP-571 are capable of controlling up to 20 subjects at once by extending multiple strings out to the affected subjects from their fingertips. Note that the SCP-571 instance controls the others by use of physical movement. Subjects will have to act carefully due to the potential of tangling SCP-570 strings when there is a large number of affected subjects. SCP-571 subjects appear to be endowed with some basic knowledge of puppeteering techniques. However, instances with a background in marionette use will be more able to utilize SCP-570. After bringing multiple subjects under their control, the SCP-571 instances and subjects will begin to seek out any gathering of prepubescent subjects and use the persons they have attached themselves in order to put on puppet shows. SCP-571 and its affected subjects will recreate any stories they know, which are easily understood by children, and usable with the number of persons they have under their control. These puppet shows may last from anywhere between one hour and several days depending on the length of the story and the number of subjects involved. Following the completion of the show, all subjects will be released from SCP-571. Subjects who were under SCP-570's control will suffer no immediate side effects after being released, with the exception of a strong sense of longing. Because of this, many subjects will eventually try to take possession of SCP-570 and attempt to create shows of their own. Subjects will claim that they experienced extreme feelings of joy and belonging when performing, and wish to give these feelings to others. This effect is not universal, and will only manifest in subjects who previously displayed symptoms of depression and anxiety. SCP-570 was recovered from Uncle Pappy's Magic Emporium, which was a magic trick in puppeteering business. The proprietor of the store had become an SCP-571 instance, and used SCP-570 on the parents of children who came into his store. Following reports from local law enforcement officers after witnessing SCP-570, Foundation personnel were deployed and containment was enacted. As of 09-18-1976, SCP-570 has been classified as safe. Addendum Testing Log 570 Test A 609-19 Subject SCP-571 6D Class Subjects Procedure SCP-571 was instructed to perform Cinderella 
using D-Class personnel. Results. Show was performed without incident, with overarching narration being provided by SCP-571. Analysis. Test was performed as a baseline for SCP-570's properties. Test B. 623-19. Subject. SCP-571. Six rabbits. Procedure. SCP-571 was instructed to perform a reenactment of the book Watership Down. Results. SCP-571 used no dialogue in the play. When asked, it claimed that such an action would be unrealistic. Analysis. Test was performed to establish baseline for SCP-570's effect on animals. Test G. 819. 19. Subject. SCP-571. Seven completely paralyzed D-Class personnel. Procedure. SCP-571 was instructed to use the D-Class personnel in a play of Peter Pan. Results. Play was performed by SCP-571 and the D-Class personnel, with SCP-571 providing all lines for the D-Class personnel, in addition to narration. SCP-571 was noted to have difficulty speaking following the test. Analysis. Later tests have shown that, once mute, SCP-571 will simply act out the motions of the performance without any dialogue. Test I. 19. Subject. SCP-570. Three D-Class subjects. Procedure. Test was conducted for six days, seven hours. Results. SCP-571 and the D-Class personnel were provided with sustenance. However, all D-Class personnel were not able to eat while being controlled by SCP-571. Following four days of testing, all D-Class had expired due to malnutrition and exhaustion. SCP-571 continued using the cadavers in the performance, providing narration in a manner similar to Test G. After five days had passed, the tissue surrounding the strings began breaking down, and after six days and seven hours, the flesh connecting the subjects to SCP-571 had decomposed and severed the connection. Analysis N.A. Addendum 2. Notes on SCP-570 Fiber Composition Samples taken from the cotton fibers used by SCP-570 to link SCP-571 and its affected subjects have been shown to match the composition of initial samples taken from SCP-2991. Due to the possibility that this particular fiber composition may be partially responsible for the effects of both anomalies, Anomalous Materials Analysis on Samples from Both Objects is currently underway. Item Number SCP-592 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-592 should be contained in Research Cell 1611-E at all times. Locked in a steel box in the middle of a frosted glass containment cubicle. Also in the cubicle are a table, two computers, a standard-sized computer scanner, an internal network connection port, and two pairs of visual distortion goggles, which must be worn upon entering the cubicle, so as to make SCP-592 illegible. The first computer serves as an analysis machine, the second as a custom firewall. All devices have been modified with specialized software and hardware and the network port has been secured such that no device other than the firewall may use it. It is strictly necessary that the computers and scanner are turned off and unplugged after experimenting, and that they are only powered for the duration of the experiment. The front and back covers of SCP-592 are to be covered in black opaque tape at all times. The cell must be guarded continually to ensure that SCP-592 is not removed. Description SCP-592 is a large hardcover book which exhibits no external qualities that could be considered unusual, but which can cause delusions, psychosis, changes in physical health and appearance, or even severe wounding when read. 
It is titled Chronicle of the 20th Century and consists of 450 all-color printed pages. It is reported that it has a printed cover, no dust jacket, with the title of the book, the publisher, and a selection of illustrations from within the text. The original cover is a deep blue. The spine contains the title and publisher name and is left uncovered by tape. The cover page informs the reader that it was published by Interworld Press, 54 Street, Chicago, Illinois, in 1996. A company named Interworld Press has never been registered in the U.S., nor does the street listed exist. The text is a collection of newspaper clippings and short articles on major events from January 1900 to December 1995. Much of the first half of the text agrees with recorded events, but at some point no later than the 15th of June 1956, a date researchers have termed the Point of Divergence POD, the text begins to diverge from known history. These divergences become more common and acute the further away from the POD the text is. Subjects reading from the text before the POD report no ill effect and generally comment that the text is well written and seems very accurately researched. Subjects reading from the book after the POD understand the passage read as accepted truth and vehemently deny any suggestions that the text is in fact incorrect. The claims subjects make are often disturbing or shocking in nature. It also appears that a subject that has read passages from a certain year can recount events that are detailed in later sections of the book. It has been found that those born before the date which the test passage indicates and lived in or nearby the location of the event described may construct personal experiences built around the event and describe them as they would any other vivid memory. The subject will go to great measures to defend the reality of their story, often turning violent if under interrogation. Exposure to SCP-592 may alter physical characteristics of the subject to conform with the events of the passage being read. This can vary from small changes in appearance or clothing to the infliction of severe wounds. For example, in one instance, a subject, D-94920, produced a scar during an interview, stating that he picked it up during the data expunged. His widow, when presented with the scar, located on his was surprised, stating she had not noticed the scar before. It has been found that once the subject discovers that the world is inconsistent with their acquired memories, they begin to feel that the present reality is an illusion, a dream, or a deceit often stating malevolent or government forces are at work in maintaining the illusion. Subjects who reach this stage enter into a profound and chronic psychosis. All attempts to treat this delusion have failed. The exact effects vary. Date of passage read. Before POD. Effects. No ill short or long-term effects. Date of passage read. Less than two months after POD. Effects Short-term Confusion No ill long-term effects Date of passage read Less than two years after POD Effects Short-term Confusion Long-term Minor mental illness Development of tics Nightmares Minor paranoia episodes And panic attacks Date of passage read Less than 10 years after POD. Effects. Short-term. Confusion. Violent episodes. Long-term. Deeply ingrained delusion formed, leading to debilitating paranoia, psychosis, and schizophrenia-type disorders. Date of passage read. Greater than 10 years after POD, or earlier, if subject forms a personal experience. Effects. Short-term, confusion, violent episodes, long-term, acute psychosis and delusions, crippling agnosia, becomes withdrawn, high chance of suicidal or homicidal behavior, severe risk of immediate but variable physical change in subject. SCP-592 was recovered during a narcotics raid in August 2006 on the property of Mr. The leader of a controversial religious group called the Church of the True History. 
Despite being in possession of SCP-592, Mr. is believed to have started the church for financial gain rather than revelation. The owner may have only survived exposure from SCP-592 for almost two years because of his rampant drug use, which included methamphetamine, cocaine, and a host of opioids. Though psychedelics, especially DMT, are known to have been used and probably interacted with the effects of SCP-592 more than the others. I believe that his delusions came from his drug use, but noted that a year after exposure to SCP-592, he found himself turning to drugs more often to, quote, hide away from the truth, end quote. In custody and deprived of his usual chemical relief, the suspect became comatose and died a week later. The circumstances of the acquisition has led to proposals to test SCP-592 in combination with psychedelic drugs. Addendum 592-A The chemical properties of SCP-592 have been studied by Dr. Grayson and the chemical forensics team. Dr. Grayson reports that Samples were obtained by means of cutting small squares of paper from the book while wearing distortion goggles. The squares were small enough to contain no more than one word. Squares containing portions of illustrations were covered by black opaque tape as soon as extracted. Our results indicate that the chemical properties of SCP-592 differ very little from any other color publication. The paper primarily consists of cellulose from common woods, and the black and yellow inks are standard. It has been found, however, that some chemicals used in the cyan and magenta inks while entirely known to science, are not normally used in the industry. An expert in inks and dyes has commented that the chemicals would be an inferior but acceptable substitute to those currently in use, if certain metal elements were much scarcer, and therefore much more expensive than they are today. Testing Protocol SCP-592 is under no circumstances to be read by a human, unless that person is a subject of an authorized test. SCP-592 is only to be analyzed by computer, using the systems provided. The book is to be scanned on a per-page basis, using the scanner provided. The scanned image is then sent to the analysis machine. The scanner and other devices are modified such that they can be used while wearing the visual distortion goggles. Note: Researchers must pass Training Course 305-S, Intermediate Braille, and Training Course 10-E use of SCP imaging software before being approved to test SCP-592. The analysis machine is modified such that it contains and supports no non-volatile, permanent, writable storage devices, such that it never stores a copy of the scanned image that may persist beyond the analysis phase. The image is destroyed from the system RAM as soon as is possible through standard secure memory flushing routines. The firewall is configured to study incoming packets for characteristics of properly processed output and destroys the packet if an insufficient amount of characteristics are discovered. This prevents the transmission of text or images that have not been sufficiently obfuscated. As SCP-592 is heavily illustrated, there are two analysis protocols. Analysis of text. The analysis machine uses industry standard optical character recognition. OCR systems to parse the text in the image and then destroys the image. The text file is then passed through a series of custom natural language processing or NLP routines to summarize the text. The original text file is then destroyed and the summary is sent to the secure foundation intranet. The NLP routines analyze the passage using statistical methods incorporating databases of diverse English corpora, some details of other SCPs, a correct chronology of events extracted from various texts, and a severely limited referential network of other entries in SCP-592. Note: Efforts to increase the degree in which analysis references other events resulted in an incident whereby data expunged, resulting in three researchers being euthanized. See document SCP-592 the summary is composed in such a way as to mitigate any possibility of exposure to the true material of the passage, but still provide useful analytical details about the event described. 
An example, SCP-592-SUMM-090777A. Note, lexical tokens from source databases are presented in all caps. Date, 7th of September, 1977. Location, Southern United States, 99% certainty. Type, Newspaper Clipping. Summary, the passage is describing human conflict. The human conflict is of an ideological or religious nature. The passage seems, 56%, to be lamenting in tone. The passage contains the numbers 2000, 1977, and 16. A relation to event SUMM-010777C and event is likely 78% certainty. It is certain, 98%, that the passage contains a reference to both SCP and SCP related incidents. Incident 592 loss of a limb following exposure to SCP-592 article on war. Analysis of images. SCP-592 contains around 200 illustrations. These are cropped from the scanned image as part of the OCR routine. The image is then subjected to a number of Fourier transforms and convolutions to obscure the resulting output from human recognition while simultaneously analyzing its structure and providing a summary of its contents by statistical analysis. Record of the original image is then destroyed. An example report, SCP-592 IMG-098. Date, 1st of April, 1963. Location, unknown bedroom with western furnishings. Type, full color photograph. Subject, the image contains two adult persons standing, one human child sitting on a chair or stool, and SCP with 100% certainty, the persons in the image should have facial features. With 100% certainty, the persons in the image do not have facial features. Item number SCP-627 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures One Class D Personnel Designated D-627 is to be assigned to SCP-627. This assignment is for life. As long as the Class D is so assigned, he is rendered exempt from the monthly terminations. SCP-627 is to be kept in a stone basin, approximately one meter across. Once daily, SCP-627 is to be removed from its basin so that lubrication may be applied to the basin. Once weekly, SCP-627 is to be removed so that the basin may be inspected for wear. The basin is to be replaced if it shows signs of wearing out. Testing on SCP-627 is currently denied to all researchers. Description SCP-627 was brought into the Foundation in December of 1932 by senior researcher A.E fleeing religious persecution in Germany. Senior researcher E found SCP-627 during his work with the German government on their own SCP protocols and felt that it could be more useful with us. SCP-627 is a sphere made of unknown stone, flecked with blue, of approximately 3 centimeters in height. When not in close, defined as skin contact, or in clothing being worn, contact with a human being, SCP-627 rolls in a circle approximately one meter across. It will not avoid inanimate obstacles, instead rolling up and over any impediments. It will never attempt to go around impediments, and, if contained in a space smaller than one meter, will increase in speed until it has worn itself away out. When confined to a small space, SCP-627 is capable of breaking the speed of sound. When not confined, SCP-627 rolls at a speed of approximately 6 rotations a minute. Note 1939 
We need to figure this one out. If we can just understand how it does what it does, we could have an unlimited supply of energy. All the top researchers on it. Stat. Site Supervisor J.R.O. Note. 1942. R. I figured it out. What to do with it. We simply... It'll work. Senior Researcher A.E. Note. 1942. We're moving forward with this project. As of now. Good job, A. You've got a promotion coming. We'll be data expunged. Site Supervisor J.R.O. Note. 1945. My God. What have we done? Site Supervisor J.R.O. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.